Welcome to the Player Development Pod. Yes, we have another interview. Why? Because there are so many incredible people in the space. And as long as I'm doing this, I want to provide exposure to people doing incredible things, not only in the space, not only on certain levels, but around the world. And today we have one of those world impactors. Yes, Savannah Bailey is here. I'm going to talk a little bit about how me and Savannah met each other, but I don't want to talk much because I'm loquacious and y'all heard me talk for over a hundred podcast episodes, but got to know Savannah uh, when I was at Kansas. She was at uh, Clemson and now she's crushing it at Florida. And I just appreciate uh, what she does, not only for this space, but for she's a been a mentor to so many. Um, she's very open about what she does. She wants to help. And it's just incredible. And I'm a big believer he or she who refreshes others will themselves be refreshed. And you can see that in Savannah's face. Savannah, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. I mean, I love this. I love the energy. That's not something that I get like all the time, especially in a death setting. So like, I love it. I'm here to receive it. Let's do it. Yeah. I like, I send like messages like all the time. Like, hey, you're crushing it. Like I just, cause I know how it is in a role. You do stuff. I send yeah. it to everybody. They put a program. I'm like, hey, let's go. But super excited to get you on here. You spoke last year at the conference on two panels, two panels, and, and you're speaking this year. You have a session on your own. We'll talk about that a little later, but shameless plug, the 2024 Player Development Conference is virtual and it's in the show notes and it will be next year. Savannah's already talked about it being a game, so we'll talk about that another another time. Maybe not next year, but, you know, next year to be in person. Did I say it's... I, I love to host, so, you know. I just realized I said it's next year. I didn't even say it's in person next year. I was like, it's next year. Of course, next year. Uh, but yes. Uh, yeah. So we will be in person at some point. But Savannah will be speaking at the 2024 Player Development Conference. And I am excited to hear uh, what she will speak about. I know what it is. You don't know yet. <laughs> Unless you join the mailing list, which is in the show notes. Okay, that's it. Shameless folks are done. All right, Savannah, tell us about yourself. Um. Yeah, sure. So I am Savannah Bailey. I currently serve as the Senior Director of Player Relations at the University of Florida, uh, working only with football team. Um, so in that role, got to create a department where one previously really didn't exist. Um, so that, that's been really empowering. I'm from Columbia, Tennessee, which is in the middle of nowhere. Um, we celebrate mules. We have Mule Day. Look it up. It's a big thing. Wow. You know, it was a great place to grow up. Maybe not the best place to grow. So um, got some of that when I attended undergrad at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, where um, I majored in microbiology. So I'm a science person. Uh, mm -hmm. Science and math was kind of my more of my thing. Um, and things started to happen at that university that just kind of changed my perspective. Right. And I think that's the joy of going to college. It's not just what you learn. It's what you learn about yourself and who you right. become um, and who you push forward to be. So I had a really interesting experience there that that prompted me to kind of go outside of what I thought I wanted to do and I think a lot of our guys find that same situation nice thank you yeah. for sharing that definitely will check out mule day that's uh yeah, mule day it's interesting. country it's all get out I know a lot of yeah yeah yep yeah it's, a, it's right. a little embarrassing but you know what you got to be proud where you're from now was your high school the fight mules no I went to Spring Hill High School and we're the Raiders. The so, Raiders? Yes. Wow. So, where the, where the tie-in is, I'm not sure. But like I said, it, it was a great place to grow up. Um, but I've really enjoyed getting to branch out from that. And I know not not everyone gets to do that. So I recognize that as a, like a great privilege to do. Awesome. Awesome. Next question before. I was about to go to your world travel. Because you branched <laughs> out. There's branching out. And there's branching, branching, branching out. And touching other places. But uh, how did you get into player development? I mean, you got, was it marine biology? No. Microbiology. Microbiology. So biology. Yeah. So I wanted to be a pathologist. Originally, I always planned to be a doctor. Uh, decided to become a different kind of doctor in education. Uh, realized that, like, you can save people's lives by, like, hey, are they breathing or are they not? Or you can save people's lives if, like, do they have quality of life or not? And so really took the, the turn into the other. And I truly love what I do every single day. Um, got into player development because originally while I was at Clemson, I uh, served as a graduate assistant for fraternity and sorority membership development. And I got to oversee like, how do you help people kind of talk about what they have, who they are, figure out their first years of college, especially when they're in a homogenous group, right? Because then that identity gets sucked up into that. Um, 
And so that that's highly relatable to the world of football too. Um, But essentially just decided like, I miss being back around sports. I miss doing that. So I printed out Clemson staff directory and I sent all these emails. I was like, Hey, I have a class assignment to do. That's a complete lie. I'm so sorry. Clemson faculty and staff. Like, I'm so sorry. Let's go. You got to get (laughs) it. I did not have that, but I knew it would help get me in the door somewhere and just started to network through the athletic department. You know, I changed my like running cycle to be like when certain people were around in certain places and, you know, so if they were like, Oh, if you look familiar, maybe um but i did i just decided i just decided that's what i wanted to do and eventually became an intern for operations at clemson football under mike dooley who's an amazing man incredibly organized i think we are you know separated at birth same brain wave sometimes um and just someone that i really enjoyed learning from the first day of that job was uh working on camp and like that's a big deal for coach sweeney too oh, he's yeah. um he's like you don't know who's parent gave up a bunch of money for their vacation or whatever yeah. else for their kid to come enjoy this camp so it better be top notch a plus excellent experience crush it and so like there's all this pressure for camp in those situations too which i think is awesome because anyone could easily just put on something and say all right cool yeah. whatever but the fact that he cared it meant a lot to me too uh, but my first job at camp was how to do check-in for players and not a single one of them was going to tell me their name because <laughs> they just expected to walk by and just be checked off the list. And then I realized I don't know enough. And so I went home that night, made flashcards of every single person on the roster, everyone on staff, names, hometowns, majors, positions, whatever, didn't matter, learned everybody. And so the next day was crushing. And I said, I'm going to make sure that every single person that I've made a card to, that I've like learned their face card, that I'm going to go connect with within this five-day camp session. And so I did. Um, And part of that was connecting with Jeff Davis. Um, So I I was sitting in the lobby and I wrote down like Paul Journey because it was right there in the the lobby area. Um, So I kind of like the the logo for it. Mm -hmm. When I was talking to Mike Dooley, had asked him what it was. He said, oh, no, I'll take you down there afterwards. So I got to sit down and talk with Jeff for a little bit. Um, You know, he's an impressive man. He's lived a life that, many players want right he has like you know six kids and this like 30 almost 40 something year marriage uh you know played in the nfl was a captain of the 81 championship team like has all this experience and wealth of knowledge he also has this booming pastor voice and he just like commands just respect and love and attention and it's one of those things that like you sit up straight when you talk to him and um so really just got to learn kind of under his tutelage said look I'll volunteer anything I can do everything I can do didn't hear anything was a little crushed right because I was like okay this is more of like what I'm talking about this is what I do currently but with fraternities (laughs) and to me football is very much so brotherhood so it made sense oh yeah absolutely. Um, and eventually got to the point where a position opened and he said like hey I want you to come interview for it so under him got to be a coordinator then turned into a director of life skills and community service I uh, got to learn so much under him and the rest of that staff to the point where I got to go and create my own department. I get to be, you know, that same position that he kind of holds there, um, but here at Florida. So. Awesome. Yeah. So, thank you for sharing that. Um, <laughs> that was so long. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. That, that's, that's perfect. I'm just amazed at the intentionality you had. Now, I'm going to go back because you study microbiology and you just gave us a micro breakdown of how you got to where you are and i think that you you know this me and you have talked like your linkedin messages are probably full there's a lot of people listening to this who want to be in player development that want to be in your space and you just gave the game plan like the, the assignment is that's to your point i have never ever when i was in the role i have never and even to this day if they say this, I never turn it down because I'm like, oh, I can't. Like you attach, you know, like, oh, someone else's outcome. Like that's a actual outcome to oh, my response. And that's incredible. The micro, the micro-ness of like, hey, here's my jogging route. Hey, here's flashcards. And it's just like, I just love that because there's so much intentionality that I think puts people over the edge. There's a reason why you're where you are, that you're already skilled to do it, but what it what it is is the effort, it's the intentionality, and I think that's what 
I mean, when we, you know, you, we all see it. We're in athletics. You know, you've been around championship teams. That's what puts teams and players above others. So thank you. That is. Oh, no, I'm, I'm good. What it's do you fun have? for me because everyone's always like, so how, so you just don't use your degree or, you know, whatever. Because it was really challenging. Like I had every intention to go to medical school. And I said, no, like being a scientist makes you meticulous. Being a scientist mm -hmm. makes you accurate. Being a scientist makes you results driven. Because you have to prove that you have found something or discovered something or changed something. You have right. to prove that. And I think oftentimes in player development, we live in so much of the world of intangibles. Okay, but prove it. Right. Prove to me the value that you have, the value that your program has, the value that you place in other people's lives. Prove it. And that's hard. That is really hard yeah. when it comes to intangible things. So that's where like that part of my brain gets exercised very regularly in right. this world. It's interesting you say that because um, working on staffs, I always tell people it's like the position is so qualitative and every other person goes to the coach with a number, academics, dietitian, strength coach, officer coordinator, defense coordinator, ticketing, the foundation, everybody has a number. So it's interesting you say that because I did have to get to a point where like, hey, I, I have to make some of this quantitative. Like it, I have to put a number to what I've done and that actually opened up some doors because like I remember handing, I was actually trying to get a raise at this university and my uh, supervisor was like, all right, just tell me everything you've done. And I was like, OK, I'm going to show you. And it was more petty, but it forced me, like you said, it forced me to say, oh, snap, that's actually a really good number of our team that has done some type of programming. And so I can get in that. But I, I, I love it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Like that. we'll talk about that because I like I see what you do in a program, what y'all do, not only in the community, but even in other places, like it's very detailed to a T, but that makes sense. An old scientist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a scientific method. Is it a seven step process? Did they change it? You know, don't ask me. I, I heard they changed the way kids do math now. In LA. Yeah, that's. Don't ask me. No. Yeah, I was just like, I remember I talked for a little bit. I was like, oh, the scientific method is way if different. You want, if you want like the microphage cycles of like a virus, I got you. But if you want something simple like that, probably can't do it. <laughs> got you. Got you. All right. So let's go from scientists to let's go to English class. Here we go. For all the okay. English teachers. How would you define player development? I think the word that like sums it up for those like hey too long didn't read people is just like growth mm -hmm. to me it's the embodiment of not all learning happens within the confines of the classroom it's the the mixture of like what is college for what is college football for and how do you combine those things to make a meaningful life um this is all very like philosophical I feel like it's not no, it's <laughs> you know it is it, it's the thing of like what is the the personhood that is put back in something that is so much so a business, right. um, so much so that is a industry, right? Where does the personhood and the people side come into that? And that's what player development is to me. Love that. Appreciate you. Appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. All right. We're going to jump into roles and responsibilities. I could stay there so much in your background, but I'm going to move on. Going to move on. Uh <laughs> You said what? But I'm not that interesting. It's fine. That's wrong. No, uh, no that's not true. Uh, roles and responsibilities. So you shared, you know, your path from coordinator to now running your own department. So, I mean, you probably get this question asked a lot. So I kind of changed it this year. It was more like, you know, what do you do in a role? Because that, that's 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 thrown out there so much. I mean, that's mm -hmm. if I got five dollars every time I heard that. Um, What's yeah, your day to day be, look like? It, right. <laughs> if five dollars, if I got five dollars for that, I would literally be flying around the world. This podcast would be every episode would be in person. But uh, <laughs> um, your roles and responsibilities, if you could talk about them as a coordinator and then the transition to what they were as you directed. And just the like, one thing I always want to tell students or former players, people that went in this role, is like just the, the benefits of being learning as a coordinator and how that helps you as a director. Yeah. And I'll even back it up because like even serving as an ops intern, what thing kind of took me into another space, right? And it's being curious, right? If I never asked, I would have never gotten the introduction. If I never like did the homework, I would have never been able to spot who I needed to find. Um, so, I mean, th those were more things that I did internally. But then also when I was working under Mike Dooley, 
after the last camp, I gave him a sheet of suggested changes. <laughs> and I know that that can rub people the wrong way or whatever else. I just said, look, I know everyone here wants to operate at a high level. These are things that I saw and some suggestions or problems that I identified and solutions to those. Please let me know if it's helpful, right? And I didn't expect anything of that. But even then he took that with such like, no one's ever done that, right? They expected an intern to do your job and only your job. And I know that's such a common phrase within football, like know your role, do your oh, job, yeah. those kind of oh, things. Yeah. And of course you do that. Like if he asked me to do anything, I was going to do it, right? Um, but then it's also like no job can ever be too beneath you and right. no task can feel too above your level either. So you mm -hmm. have to be able to like, hey, I'll take out the trash and I'll lead the team. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. All of it is something that I'm willing to do and we'll figure out. So going from like intern to coordinator, the coordinator side, I think like there's so much value in that position because you have to know everything. <laughs> it's usually the low man on the totem pole, but you have to know everything. And one thing about me is like, I might not know something, but I'm not going to not know it for long. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure out the person I need to talk to, whatever that is. The coordinator also typically like does a lot of the administrative work which nobody enjoys, uh, you know, for being quite honest, but it is one of those, it's your opportunity to be extremely detailed, organized, set agendas and therefore control meeting topics, uh, you know, be able to like set things in a way that, hey, I'm going to set up things that's beneficial for you, for me, for the team, for everybody. And you can see that in my work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's fun kind of being a little man. And, and I get it, like, you don't have the credit, you don't have the whatever. And at some point you have to say like, hey, every time, that Jeff Davis got complimented for the, the good work that we all did as a team. You have to say, I'm a reflection of him. My work is a reflection of him. In those moments, that gratitude is also going to me. It's also going to other teammates. It's also going to the students that invested in themselves. Yeah. It goes everywhere. So I had to get used to like, get out of your own feelings <laughs> and do the work. Um, but there's a lot of power in being a coordinator that people don't realize. So yeah. I'm, I'm a big advocate for it, right? There's nothing wrong with an entry-level job, nothing. Right. Um, you said something before, before you go to director, you said something I've never heard. Um, yeah. and I just was like, oh, wow. I wrote it down. Uh, <laughs> people always say, you know, no task below you, but I think you said no, uh, I think you said don't, no task. There's no task. But how did you say it? That was just, I remember it's recorded. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But it was basically the, the gist of it was like, yeah, there's no task below you, but also you can do great things. And Rise I think, to the occasion. Like, don't yeah. expect it. Like, don't give yourself a ceiling before someone else does. And there's a way to do it that's in a humble, respectful way. There's a way to do it that says, hey, I'm after the same things you are. Um, there's a way to do it that isn't self-promoting, right? And that's where, like, the ceiling doesn't become a ceiling anymore because no one put it on you. And more, most importantly, you didn't put it on yourself. Mm. So like that I'm, i just thought that was because so many times we always tell entry yeah. level like hey nothing's below you nothing nobody ever talks about i'm always a big person if you're going to talk about hey whatever this is like hey we're going to come in we're going to do this but while we do this you also can achieve this and so all right now i'm sorry i'm done <laughs> all good um as a director it was one of those i actually still held on to a good bit of my like coordinator roles as I was transitioning someone into that new coordinator role. So I got to become a teacher, right? Uh, in a very different spot. And I know that folks that have always worked solo, like that is something that is difficult, right? How do you appropriately delegate? How do you communicate like styles and ways to do things and still embrace the way that they might wanna do things, right? Just as an individual. Um, but as a director, I had a very like confined focus into life skills and community service which, you know, were, were more of my passion areas anyway. I was lucky enough to work with Rashard Hall, who like bouncing up and down for all things career and professional development, like yeah. he's the consummate professional, so it made sense. Um, but making sure that like we still crossed in everything we did because the life skills that I would be teaching would directly show up in professionalism and the professionalism would then cycle back into whatever else. And like all of it has to play a role within each other. So even in my own like pillar focus, I had to make sure that I wasn't just doing life skills because if I did that and did that only, then I wasn't giving due credit, due responsibility to loop everything together. If it's holistic development, do it holistically. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it sounds simple, but like 
at the time. That was a lesson we had to learn. That's a lesson we had to learn as a team. So, um, and then currently in like kind of being a department head, the role shifts drastically because now it's not just me teaching a coordinator. No, now I am overseeing three other professional staff members, um, making sure that like assessment and curriculum and all these things are kind of done. What are those measurables? How do we do it? But then also being like the regular communicator for all things as it relates to recruits, as it relates to donor relationships, as it relates to alumni, as it relates to actual alumni of the school and not just of the program. You are the face of all of those things. And if you know me, like I'm a background person. (laughs) So that, that was an adjustment for me, right? How do I confidently communicate about these things in a way that applies to each person? Because each person might value something different within the program. But how do you make sure like it's all unified in a way that people understand what it is we're doing and how they can be involved? Because otherwise you're untapping resources. So you have all of the, the duties of, you know, anyone else that'd be in like player development side, but as a supervisor, you have different duties. And as a liaison, you have different duties. And as a representative of something much bigger than yourself that, you know, you hope is sustainable enough to last long after you. Like, how do you set that up? And so that is a great responsibility of mine. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So if you don't mind, because you spoke last year in the conference about, you know, you were part of a staff. And like I said, in your pre-show, uh, <laughs> always like the free show those people are like. And if you subscribe to the Patreon, you can see the pre-show. No, <laughs> but in the pre-show, I think you're one of the few people that move from a team to leading a team, I, I I know I nerd out on player development. I don't have the stats, but I think that's true. But can you just talk about the roles of your, or maybe the titles that are underneath you and, yeah. uh, at, at Florida? Yeah. Um, so of course, senior director of player development, um, and then also having a career and professional development director. So I have that person in Dr. Stephen Ali, who's a former player, um, incredible human being, incredible mentor. So, so smart. Just, Lots of value add there. Um, and then also a coordinator who services as well as like the football business manager. So you're talking about great with numbers, details, has it down. I have that person in Diane LeBon. So, so much respect and appreciation for that. Um, and then I also have a current like student intern. Um, and that right now is uh, Brandon Spikes as he finishes up his degree. So as he's oh. kind of finishing things up and that's so humbling for me to see someone that could easily say, oh, I've played such and such years in the league. Yeah. I don't need to be reporting to nobody. And this man says, I want to learn from you. Right. Like the powerful impact that has for him, for me, and for any of the guys that see it of just, we want to learn from each other. How does that, what does that look like? What vulnerability do you have to share? What ego do you have to set aside for those right. things? It's awesome. Um, so that's my current staff and I'm really, really, yeah, that's awesome. I, I just love hearing you say that because I'm a, I'm a big believer if we all work together, we all do well, we can all achieve our individual goals we have together. Yeah. Whatever that is, we can achieve it. So thank you for sharing that. And um, I'm going to ask you this next question <laughs> without me answering it. Uh, <laughs> what is the best programming initiative you've created and <laughs> why is it always in California? No, I'm sorry. What, <laughs> why is it in California or South Africa or Japan or uh, the many places y'all been. You've probably been to Atlanta. Yeah. Yep. See, I knew it. All right. So let me let you. <laughs> uh, what is the best programming initiative you've created or been a part of? Um, I think when you talk about like kind of large scale ones, I I love abroad travel. I think going anywhere changes your perspective. Like you do not come back the same. You will not come back the same person, same leader. You you develop and evolve into something else. Um, And it's really powerful, I think, to just gain perspective anywhere. And then to learn that you don't even need to go across the world to find that, because once you've done that and you come back, you see it more in your own backyard. Um, It just creates a different sense of reverence for where you're at and a real grounding purpose. So like any of our abroad service trips, I think is monumental in development. It's something that I'm always a huge proponent of. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think on a smaller scale, like something that is more in-house because I get it, like abroad trips are great, but they're expensive. It might not necessarily be accessible. Uh, One of the best things that we've done is actually this past semester. So for the first seven weeks that our freshmen and transfer students were here, we met with them every single week as a group. 
yes. and just did different topics. And it wasn't like, oh, we're going to teach you how to communicate or nothing like that. No, we had dialogues about relationships, about who are you as a person, about, you know, the the struggle and strengths of transitions and things like that. It wasn't so much of like, hey, let me teach you about this thing. It was, let's listen to each other. Let's delve into like, what was your experience and what's my experience and what is your expertise and, you know, what did he learn and, you know, all those kind of things. And it just keeps a relationship going in a place that can be very volatile, right? When you're talking about like new people coming in, transfer folks coming in, everyone's trying to be the guy again in some new environment. So who supports you in that? Yeah. And it's got to be each other. And so when it when it forms in that space and then carries out over into the larger parts of the team, that's an empowering thing. So I was really excited about. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I just realized this uh, before I got on the call. And, and this is even when we like just met on Zooms or just whatever, I always catch you coming off of a trip. And so last year at the conference, <laughs> you were fresh from uh, South Africa, Johannesburg. Correct me if I'm wrong. Cape Town. Cape Town. Cape Town. You were fresh from South Africa and then fresh from Portland, Oregon. I think y'all went to the night. Right. Yeah. We did that one back to back and then did this. Yeah. I <laughs> I was just like, yo, and now I'm catching you coming back from LA where you yeah. all did. Uh, I'll let you describe. So <laughs> catch you from LA. Yeah. Can you talk about, and soon you all, if you haven't followed Gator Made on LinkedIn, you're missing a lot. I'm just saying LinkedIn, if you're not using it, you're missing it, but y'all do an incredible job on LinkedIn. But <laughs> once again, I digress. Can you talk about uh, <laughs> what happened in LA for you and your scholar athletes? Yeah, so RLA trip, we call it our business break because it's something that has to happen within spring break. So I'm asking for the guys to give up one of the three weeks that they're off for all of spring to me. <laughs> so I understand like what an ask that is. Um, but essentially it's all based in corporate experience and exposure, right? Um, and so we've done these before in Atlanta, in New York, and now this past year in LA, um, where each day we kind of theme things differently. So day one was fashion. We went to LA showroom on Rodeo Drive, just kind of going through like what it is to have a sense of style, a sense of self, um, how those markets work, supply chain, all those kind of things, right? The business side and the fun side. Um, the next day, we kind of focus more a little bit in sports. We did NFL Network Studios where they read off of a teleprompter. They got a little schooled in that one, right? Because it's a lot harder <laughs> than it looks. Yeah. Um, and then the, the next visit we had for that day was with the Lakers. So a different panel and a different sport, right? But if you love to compete, working in the sports industry, it's a, it's a go, right? Yeah. And it's one of those, like, these are all people that also value the experience and transferable skills they have as athletes. Um, and we got to shoot around the practice court. So that's fun too. Um, you know, you, yeah. you got to add like the, the flavors of each place. Yeah. Um, we are fortunate enough to even hear from the, the president of the Lakers and him just kind of drop gems of like, this experience is not something that a lot of people have. Um, and just kind of that realization of like, oh, I really am being, set up, taken care of, thought about, pursued, and I don't even know it, right? Um, and so that was really cool. The next day we did tech. So we were with Google and then with uh, Activision and Blizzard, who make you know such games as Call of Duty. Yeah. My personal favorite is Spyro from them. But um, yeah, so even then, just like getting to see from a tech side, their transferable skills that, that work in there. So, um, you know, we talked to Google on corporate partnerships, which also include a lot of sports analytics and yeah. things like that. So like there's through lines to what it is you already know and do, it just makes sense. Uh, and while at Activision, of course, we had a Call of Duty tournament. <laughs> you know, you gotta have a little fun, Whoa, little cool. competition there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But just to learn what like diversity, equity, and inclusion looks like in a gaming industry, right? Yeah. Um, can you find people that look like you that design and game and, and do everything else, right? Um, in fact, one of the Call of Duty characters touch the man that he is inspired off of famous drunk dark group and kind of talked about what his role was in the company and everything. And, you right. know, that's an empowering thing to be like, Oh, I, I want to do that. Yeah. Uh, and then our last day of corporate visits, we hung out at Paramount pictures. We actually have an amazing alumnus from the university of Florida, R. Luxembourg, who hosted us. He serves in kind of like a VP level there. Um, and we did, we just kind of got to learn about some like movie making magic. How does that work in Hollywood? How does that process work? Um, whether it's music development or acting or contracts or whatever else, like just absolute gold 
when talking about networking and how to put yourself out there because that's one industry that if you can't do it, <laughs> you're not going to get very far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very rarely is someone just plucked out of obscurity right. and put into positions of success. And so it, it is another industry. You know, you complimented my intentionality. Well, that's one too um, that you got to have. And then we run it at our trip with the alumni mixer with the SoCal Gator Club. So making cool. sure, hey, if you're a Ram or a Charger or you move to the West Coast, or maybe you never want to move to the West Coast again, maybe you never want to go back out there, but you might need something. You've got a group of people that support you on Sundays and will support you for the rest of their lives if you create that connection. And so we help bridge that gap. See, I, uh, that's, that's so awesome. And I think I, I really love the way you ended it. I think alumni engagement is the most underutilized part yep. of programming. For, and really, honestly, from uh, like the entire collegiate program, no matter what sport, I just think like, I mean, it's, it's, it's instant. You send an email and it's like, they're there. Oh, you know, and I just, yep. yeah, I, I appreciate you, you know, bringing it up. And if you don't mind, <clears throat> can you talk about the importance of engaging an alumni in every place that you all go? Because mm -hmm. one thing I told my athletes was like, when I was at KU, I was like, Hey, that, that Jayhawk carries weight in more places than Kansas or the Midwest. And I don't know the, the Gatorhead, uh, you know, carries more weight than you know florida or the southeast so um yeah if you could talk about like how important it is for you to always engage alumni when you're doing these trips yeah um well you know i didn't go to school here right but i lead and made the program called gator make and so if you can believe it i've had a lot of people be like how can you be the person to run that and you're not gator made yourself and blah, blah, blah. and i get it i get where they're coming from hey i would love to transfer all of my like PhD stuff over here and officially be a Gator. But yeah. my automatic retort to that is you're right, but you did. So how about you host the internship? Yeah. You be that mentorship. You tell them why it's important to be a Gator. Right. Don't, don't tell me, tell them. And so that's one of those like, oh, you know what? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's just one of those like fun things that I get to do all the time where I get to explain experiences and say like, but your experience is so valuable and they don't even know that because they haven't had a chance to engage in that way. Or maybe they're afraid to engage in that way or whatever else. So if I can create the environment for those things to happen, or, you know, when I'm not advocating for them in spaces that they're not, it's usually with a bunch of alumni or corporate people that, you know, like they're looking for their personal tie in the same way that people love to hear their name repeated when you're talking to them. They love to hear like the true connection to why this would matter to me. And the more personal you can make it, the more personal the relationship is. And I guarantee you, they just get more fruits of that labor if it's done correctly. So like any alumni that's out there, I'm always like, hey, would you like to do this? Would you like to do this? And even if it's a no, that's fine. Because the fact that they have that and like represent that Gator logo somewhere else, you know, there's the old commercial where it's just people walking through different countries and they're like, go Gators. And that's it. Because right. that's a universal thing for us. Uh, you can walk in anywhere and say, go Gators, and someone will say it back. Um, and just for the guys to get that recognition that, like, that persists and permeates every space, every industry, every position that you could possibly want, and then some, has some rep there. So Love it. I love it. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I think yeah. I tell people all the time, like, <clears throat> people ask me, like, well, you know, what would be one of the first things – you would do if you like start all over and number one build the relationships like you said flashcards got to know everybody number two, <laughs> reaching out to alumni hey you know we would love to have you around whatever it may be all right so you uh lead a team and you have hired before and so one thing i i really want because once again a lot of people listening to this um are wanting to get in a role and so the question here is, what would you look for in someone you would hire in your department? If a uh, position's open right now, you press send on the position and it goes out to all the interweb and job listings and the applications come in. What are you looking for? The number one thing I look for in anyone that works with me is creativity. Because I think the industry in itself and the way you like teach people and the way you present things can get stale fast. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about people that have very limited time and very limited time with us as a whole. 
-hmm. So whatever you're doing has to make like strong impact. You have to make strong impact. So I think like that creativity and the fearlessness that comes with, oh, I want to try something. Right. That's something I value above most other things. Do not tell me in an interview what I want to hear. You know, it's not one of those like, you don't need to tell me about why football is the most important thing to you in your life. Uh, that's great. Um, but also like it is to a lot of people. Yeah. Tell me why football can empower them for the rest of their lives if we do it right. You know, um, I, I like to learn from other people of like, what skill set do you have that is unique, that is totally different than mine, right? That's totally different than any other member of the teams. Like I'm looking to to mesh, right? And to fill gaps, to try new things. I don't want for the same people. Right. <laughs> that that just, yeah. I'm sure we'd be like cranking things out, but, you know, we would lose a piece of that personhood that you tout, you know, as being like what player development is. So yeah. I want someone that's an individual. I want someone that can work as a team, but also has like individual style and flair and personality because the relationship building piece is the most important. Um, and I do think like creativity goes such a long way in how you approach people, how do you navigate spaces, what spaces do you create and how those kind of things all matter. So that's one of the big ones. Yes. Well, you creative minds out there. So if you want to hear, yes, yes. So Next two questions uh, deal with advice. And the first one will be the best advice you received. And then the next will be any advice you would have for someone listening who is like, you know what? I love your path. I love your <laughs> advice. So we'll start with the best advice you've received. Um, it's not necessarily from a direct person. I think both of these are things that I've seen and I've written over and over again, whether it be on my like daily note taking or whatever that like I keep in mind, um, one of which is kind of funny because I've not done this on this podcast because this is friends talking. Um, but one of those pieces of advice was strong verbs, short sentences. And that was it. Like that's the mm -hmm. advice. Because when I think of, especially women in this space, being taken seriously, being taken as like a, a authority figure or someone that would, you know, reserve the same respect that other professionals have in the space. Um, I think sometimes like being able to say things in a way that is striking, but not long-winded is powerful, but not passive. You know, those kind of things make a lot of difference for some people. And so that was a, a huge piece of advice because not everyone's like that. Right. You know, there's some people that are like, Svenny, you're great. We love it, whatever. And there's some people that are automatically dismissive. That right. gives them a reason not to dismiss me. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the other one is like surround yourself with complex thinkers and not smooth talkers uh, <laughs> I think so easily people get lost in the way that oh that guy is a great leader because the way he communicates or the way he carries himself or the way he dresses or whatever um, that's like smooth talker energy in, in my opinion like yes there are plenty of complex thinkers that can do those things well but don't discount someone because of the way that they present to you in that moment or in, you know, a, a different sphere. I mean, you see it with players all the time, the guy who isn't comfortable in this space, but let's loosen another, right? Oh, yeah. so, like find the complex thinkers and like give people that chance to communicate in a way that is authentic to them. Oh. <laughs> those are mine. Those are my like advice that I, that I cherish. So. That is that is neat. I that complex thing. I I like that. Now, I never I never knew how to like articulate it in my life, but I was always I was always a person like look what is it look look twice cut once, mm -hmm. and I was always just like looking for consistency because uh, you know I need a complex because like to me that's it's crazy. You said I never could like piece it together. I would always tell people just take it takes time, but like complex thinkers because obstacles will come for both and a smooth talker can't talk anymore but the complex thinker is thinking about okay here's the solution so right or you know and get them both in the room and on the same team and see what that produces like yeah you know um i think it's just much more of one of those that i attribute to myself because my delivery and anyone will tell you this is not always perfect my first impression is not always perfect right but it is one of those what is going on up here with all of that intentionality and love and care that doesn't always outwardly face. Um, so, 
All right, Savannah, so now advice for those looking to get in this space. Those, once again, thank you all for listening. Thank you for the directors that are listening on the pro level, collegiate level, internationally, those who are students, those who are transitioning us from other careers. Thank you all so much. And now it's your advice to those looking to get in the, into this space. Yeah. Um, I think so much of my like hardship within entering the space and staying in the space and establishing myself in the space is just that of like, as a woman, there, there are certain things that are like passed upon you, certain judgments and anything else. Um, I feel like in a lot of professional spaces, and this isn't just in sports, but women, especially at, as they progress into different levels, are kind of put in a dichotomy. Um, but especially in football, you're either like loving and nurturing and kind and, um, you know, just accommodating, or you're frigid and harsh and protocol based. And, you know, I think people see that as like, you're one or the other. And my advice to people is you can be both. You can be nurturing and coach somebody. You can be, you know, just as much about your business and protocol, but do so with so much love and care that it comes from the place of great intention of what I want for you, for me, for this team, for our futures. Um, I think there's just a way to do it. Now, I don't master it all the time, and I don't think anybody will. But what grinds my gears more than anything is when someone's like, I feel like the mom of the team. And then I think like, I'm sorry, would you call that man? Oh, so you're like the daddy of the team. No, <laughs> no, he wouldn't. Um, but I can still love that person that same way. I can still be nurturing to their growth, but also set high expectations of them, right? If coaches can coach hard and love hard, so can you. Awesome. Appreciate you sharing that. Thank you so much for your time. This has been great. I can't wait to re-listen to it. I just, <laughs> so much to break down, no pun intended from microbiology. But uh, yeah, I may have to get a Petri dish. and no. That's fine. I I'll walk you through all of it. <laughs> Thank you for your time. So, oh, it's not over. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go, rapid fire. What is a new habit or something that you're working on right now? Uh, not pressing snooze. Oh, that's, that's, I'm still, when you get, when you get the secret sauce of that, please share. Uh, <laughs> what are you reading right now? I actually, so I'm a big audiobook girl. Um, and it's a little embarrassing to say it doesn't sound like it fits, but I just listened to Paris Hilton's autobiography, which sounds like, all right, Savannah. <laughs> but when I tell you like, just what a different perspective, she's an advocate for a lot of things that people aren't aware of. Um, just like the way that women were treated, especially women celebrities in the early aughts and how that's carried over and changed today. Just, you know, different different time capsule. And it's one of those like, oh, I would have never thought of that. So yeah. it was really good. Hey, you might, you might have to take it out. <laughs> I, do, I do book reviews for hobbies. So, you know, yeah. Someone walked in your office right now and said, hey, Savannah, thank you so much. Here's a $25 gift card to eat lunch somewhere in Gainesville. Where are you going? The top. You said the top? The top. Yeah. Okay. The top. It's like a, it's a local joint. It's right downtown. It's so fun. It has this really cute patio, has nice vibes out there, has a pool table. You know, it's just one of those like relax into yourself for a little bit. Okay. The top. I'll write that down. Okay. Yep, yep. Happy to take you if you're ever in Gainesville. Hey, let's go. All right. Somebody <laughs> does the same exact act, except it's five o'clock. Coach Napier. Shout out to Coach Napier. Um, he actually was, this is a crazy story. Coach Napier was the first coach I ever met when I was a high school coach. First college coach I ever met. He was at Colorado state. No way. I met him and like, I was young and he kind of like, like this, it was this recruiting thing. I didn't know what I was doing. And he kind of like, he invited me to like, they had a cop, one of our coaches at Colorado state alone. So I went to their event in Houston and like, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I know he's had done a lot since, but I always remember. He's a great dude. I'll say that yeah. through and through. Yeah. He is that person. Always. Another funny story about Coach Napier. So on signing day in 2016, I, for the one time in my life, I didn't have my phone on me. And Coach Napier was coaching at um, another university in the SEC. And um, yeah, I, I, try, I know I, I know I can get, I'm not going to mention universities. <laughs> uh, and he called and I was like, oh, we had a linebacker who was, you know, he's a good linebacker. I'm like, I'm calling back, I'm calling back, like texting like, Coach, 
I'm sorry, I missed your call, but you know, signing day can be crazy, but that, that's always funny. But anyway, he comes to your office, gives you a $150 gift card for dinner, tells everybody, gives it to the entire staff, says, everybody get out of the office right now, go get dinner on me. Where are you going? They have a great place called Embers. That's like, it's a steakhouse. It has all this like very premium meat. But my favorite thing to get there is lamb. If I can get like a lamb, rack yeah. ribs or like a lamb chops, it's my favorite. So you said it's Embers? Embers, yep. Nice, nice. There we go. All right, band. Which band would you join past or present? Band or music group? We would, Matt. Okay. I'd go like be a hippie with Stevie Nicks and, you know, Hang out. I have no musical talent, so like I'll hit the tambourine or something, but you know. Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could be in a movie with any actor. Which actor would you be in a movie with? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't actually know an, a, an answer to that one. I was not, <laughs> I was not prepared for that. Um, I don't know, but I can tell you the type of movie I'd want to be in. There we go. Uh, I Yeah, like I don't have an actor in mind. So I'm a horror movie buff. Oh, wow. And I think in a different life, I would love to be like a screen queen that's just in horror movies. And like, I don't know, I think it's so fun. It's interesting to learn what people are afraid of and why and how that relates to the times and everything. So like, that's what I'd want to do. Okay. <laughs> Didn't expect that, but that's pretty nope, cool. No one ever does. <laughs> Until you get until you meet me and then you have all my like Halloween stuff everywhere. You're like, oh, let's check something. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. You so your office is that office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if a gator broke loose in your office right now, a live gator, mm -hmm. what's the first thing you're doing? I've been training my whole life for this. When I was a little <laughs> kid, I wanted to be the crocodile hunter. I watched Steve Irwin religiously. I feel like I know exactly what I'd have to do. We're getting on the back. We're putting pressure on the head. We're not letting up. Can't get the death roll going. I'm on it. There we go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> she teach like a gator response classes. <laughs> you know, like in Tennessee, we learned about bears of like, hey, brown bear, black bear. What do right. you do? You know, and then here they're like, oh, no, we learned about hurricanes and alligators. <laughs> so like every kid learns something a little different. But It's very true. Very true. And then how do you take care of yourself? You take care of so many people. You do so much. You're traveling, you're meeting people, you're meeting alumni. How do you take care of yourself? I think by spending time with people that take care of me. So mm -hmm. like I've got really powerful friendships in my life. I've, I adore like my mom and mm -hmm. spending quality time with her. Um, getting to know her as like two adults is so different. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's very rewarding and like, that's when I feel like I'm taking care of myself when I'm just being around other people that would willingly take care of me the same way that I get to take care of so many. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And the last question I have, uh, there's probably a lot of people listening to this. Some know you, some don't. For those who do not know you and for some that do know you but haven't followed you, how can we find you on the socials? <laughs> I only have a LinkedIn. Uh, I, I recognize things that are not healthy for me. And that is a lot of social media. So I've never had an Instagram. I've never had a Twitter, none of the other stuff like ever. Um, and so that just wasn't, wasn't what I did. Um, so I'm on LinkedIn though. I will happily connect. I'm always open when someone's like, Hey, do you have five minutes? To yes. Yes. Because you know what? If other people didn't do that for me, when I printed out the directory, I wouldn't have any of this. So my answer is yes. Yes. In advance. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I get on social media, and I'm, with, I'm just like, ah, I think I, I think it's been a good run. Um, I, I feel really bad for the folks that like have to have that for their jobs or whatever else, and right. maybe it's not their favorite thing. There's some people that are all about it and like good for you. I just know it's not good for me, and that's okay. Yeah, nice. Not mad at you for that one. <laughs> well, check her out on LinkedIn, y'all. You all, uh, Savannah Bay, but also Gatormates LinkedIn. There's a lot of. Um, just incredible information on what they do. I post a lot of curriculum, what yeah. we're doing, what you can do, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a big, I'm, I mean, I talked about it. Yeah, you texted me about it when I had the the uh, conversation about Clemson. You can't copy, but you can take principles and, and do certain things. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot out there for you all. So Savannah, thank you so much for not only being on this podcast, but for all you do for people in this space, for the athletes you serve, for the people you work for, and then for you all that are listening, five minutes she's she's gonna do it she's gonna do it so 
thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. And mm -hmm. yes, to you all that are listening, check the show notes. There's a lot of information there. Uh, and as I always say, go out and create generational impact. Don't wait, create that generational impact today. I'll see y'all.